Hey guys, Ryan here with LED Gardener. Today we're checking out the HLG 100, which is the new kit from Horticulture Lighting Group. And this kit sits between two of their current offerings. So it's a little bit more powerful than their HLG 65, which is a 65 watt kit that uses the QB120, this board here. And it's a little bit less powerful than the 135 watt kit, which uses the QB288. And this is one of the original quantum boards. A couple things right off the bat that I like about the HLG 100. Number one is that it doesn't require a heat sink. So a heat sink is this piece right here. It's just a big chunk of aluminum with fins. You need a heat sink for the QB288 because the diodes on there are so densely packed and they're getting a lot of power. So they need a way to dissipate that heat somehow. And you do that with all this surface area on this chunk of aluminum. But not having to do a heat sink is a big plus for this thing because this board is thick enough, it's got enough surface area and the diodes are spaced far enough apart that it's not required. So the driver just literally sits on the back of this chunk of metal. There's a couple bolts that bolt this thing down and then it plugs in. And the only other component left in the kit is the hangers. So one per corner and then it hangs from a single point on this carabiner. So I guess you've seen it all already. Maybe we'll take a little bit closer look at it, talk about some specs, and we'll do some comparisons for PPFD, power draw, and temperature against its two brothers and see where it sits. The HLG100 is a PCB that's built with Samsung LM561C S6 bin diodes. It's made up of 16 parallel strings of diodes, with each string containing 12 in series for a total of 192 LEDs. The PCB is about a sixteenth of an inch thick and there's a single DC barrel connector on the board that matches with the connector on the included driver. The HLG100 kits are currently available in 3000K and 4000K color temperatures and HLG recommends if you're going to use this kit mainly for vegging or for greens, you should be going with the 4000K color temp just for that extra blue which helps to keep node spacing tight. And if you do intend to use this light mainly as a flowering light, go with the 3000K instead for the extra red boost. In terms of coverage, Horticulture Lighting Group suggests that you use this light to flower up to a 2 foot by 2 foot space and veg up to a 3 foot by 3 foot space. The driver that you get in this kit is a Meanwell OWA90U36P1M, that's a mouthful, constant voltage plus constant current driver, and it outputs 2.5 amps at 36 volts with about 91% efficiency. As mentioned, the driver comes pre-terminated on both the DC output and the AC input side. The DC output side has a small barrel connector on it and is about a foot long, whereas the AC side has a two-prong AC connector on it, and that cable is about five feet long. To install the driver, just push the included bolts up through the holes in the middle of the PCB, and then on the back side of the board, pass these bolts through the mounting holes in the driver, and then fasten the nuts down on top, and plug the driver into the connector on the board, clip your hangers onto the corners, and you're ready to hang your light. Now, moving on to some testing. For our testing, we're going to be pitting this light against its little brother, which is the HLG65, as well as its bigger brother, which is the 135 watt kit. In terms of power draw, true to its name, the HLG100 pulls about 100 watts from the wall, the HLG65 watt kit was pulling 67 watts, and the 135 watt kit was actually pulling about 158 watts. I also tested the board and driver temperature for each of these kits after running for an hour using a pair of thermocouples, and I found that the HLG100 board ran at about 50 degrees Celsius, and the top of the driver case hit about 58 degrees Celsius. The HLG65 ran cooler with the board hitting about 49 degrees and the driver 50 degrees, and the hottest was the 135 watt kit on which the board measured 63 degrees and the driver measured 54 degrees. Next, I took PPFD measurements for the three kits, and they all pretty much ended up where I thought they would. I used my Apogee SQ500 PAR sensor and a Fluke 287 multimeter to get these results, and took measurements at a distance of 18 inches from the boards to the top of the sensor, as well as 12 inches from the boards to the top of the sensor. To make it easier to compare, I've stacked the results all into a single PPFD chart. So the numbers in blue text that you see are the measurements that I got for the 135 watt kit, the numbers in red are for the HLG100, and the numbers in green are for the HLG65. And we're gonna start with measurements taking at 18 inches from the sensor. So at 18 inches, the 135 watt kit was reading about 700 micromoles per meter squared per second with the sensor centered directly beneath the light and had an average of 565 micromoles around the one foot perimeter. And at two feet, it averaged about 445 micromoles. The HLG100 had a PPFD of 420 on center and maintained a 1 foot perimeter average of 350 micromoles, 
Around the 2-foot perimeter, it averaged 270 micromoles. And finally, the HLG-65 measured 260 micromoles per meter squared per second dead center and averaged 210 at 1 foot and 170 at 2 feet. Now, moving the light down to a distance of just 12 inches between the top of the sensor and the bottom of the light, the 135-watt kit was totally blasting the space with a center value of 1140 and an average of 715 micromoles around the 1-foot perimeter and 480 micromoles around the 2-foot perimeter. The HLG100 had a center value of 640 with an average of 445 around the 1-foot and 300 around the 2-foot. And last of all, the HLG65 read 410 micromoles on center, with an average of 275 at 1 foot, and 185 micromoles at 2 feet. Now, just to help visualize what you actually gain by moving from 18 inches down to 12 inches, I calculated the difference between each position for each of the three lights, and compiled it into another PPFD chart that you're looking at now. It might be worth pausing the video just to have a closer look at this, but I'll summarize it kind of quickly. The biggest gains were obviously made in the center and the one foot perimeter areas. Moving the lights down from 18 inches to 12 inches resulted in a center spot gain of about 440 micromoles for the 135 watt kit, 220 micromoles for the HLG100, and 150 micromoles for the HLG65. However, that being said, moving the lights down didn't really have an effect on the four outermost corners of the 2x2, and even ended up reducing the light in some cases, and this is just due to the beam angle of the diodes, and they were unable to hit those outer corners as effectively when they were lowered down to 12 inches. So there's all my data on this light. I'll leave you with my final thoughts. I think the HLG100 is a really good fit in the Horticulture Lighting Group kit lineup for people that are looking to do small grows. It can be built in less than like five minutes and it'd be just about impossible to screw up the assembly, which is great because a lot of people who are really new to the game and are growing in these small spaces might be intimidated by the assembly of the bigger 135 watt kit, which is considerably more involved. In a 2x2, as we saw, the 135 watt kit is a little overkill with a PPFD of over 1100 micromoles at 12 inches on center, and the HLG65 comes in just a little bit shy of the optimal light levels for flowering, so the HLG100 kind of slides in perfectly between the two, providing a good solid PPFD, but with less power draw and lower heat than the bigger kit. If you're looking for more information on this light, check out horticulturelightinggroup.com, and to buy this thing, it is currently available on Amazon for 149 American and can also be found a few other places on the web like LED Grow Lights Depot or GrowersLights.com. And I'll throw these links down in the description. 